My name is Anna Marie, and we're back here again with Edward Brooks, who's a naturalist and an artist. And today we're going to be doing some wildlife drawings uh, of mammals specifically. So last week we did a landscape, beautiful landscape pastel drawing with Edward. A couple weeks before we did some bird drawings, and you can find all of those on our videos page um, in Facebook or also on our YouTube channel if you want to watch the whole things. Uh, we're really excited to have you back here today. Again, we're in the North Coyote Valley Conservation Area, which is a pretty recently protected area of land just south of downtown San Jose. It's a really, really essential landscape for water, working lands, and wildlife, and for people, for people like you and me, to come and enjoy nature. Um, and so we're bringing you here today for some art. Uh, and I also wanted to remind everyone we encourage you to go outside in your own neighborhood and backyard to engage with nature one-on-one -on -one also, if you're able to. Uh, if you do go out and about, just make sure you're keeping that six feet of distance between yourself and for the people that you do not live with. Um, and today, we're, just, we're excited to get going. Um, if you're watching the live stream today and you wanna invite other people, there's a pretty cool uh, Facebook feature. It's a little uh, purple button that's a watch party, so you can invite other friends on Facebook, or you can just give someone a text or a phone call and, uh, and have them join us. And if someone can't make it for the live stream portion, like I said, all of our recordings will be available afterwards uh, to watch on your own time. So uh, as always, you guys are ears and eyes. If there's something wrong with the audio, if there's something wrong with, um, with the visuals, we can try everything to fix it. So leave a comment. And uh, of course, you can ask questions to Edward as he goes through, and I'll try to field those to him as they come in. So uh, let's get started, thanks. Hi, everyone. It's beautiful out here. We're gonna be drawing mammals today. You can't see it, but up on the peak behind me, there's actually a pig walking around, a wild boar. And to its right, and to its right, up on the peak itself, there's three deer up on the mountain top there. So there's lots of mammals around. Of course, it's a little too far for us to be able to draw. So usually, I have my camera with me, and I'm taking photographs, and then I draw the mammals from my photographs because I've got telephoto lens, and it's easier that way. You can draw through a telescope as well. Today we're going to draw from books and from photographs. I'll grab the mic so that everybody can hear me. I have photographs that I've taken and uh, um, cut the animal out of the image using my telephoto lens. I also have books that I've used to learn how to draw mammals in the past and teach. These are texts that you can actually learn how to draw mammals. This one is the one I recommend, Jack Ham. He has a lot of information on what to do and what not to do inside. And then for reference, just so that you can understand the structure of the, the legs and the muscles, you have somebody like Charles Knight, okay, that does more anatomical illustrations. So we'll look at anatomy from, from an artist's point of view, not from a, an illustrator's point of view, not from a scientific illustrator's point of view anyway. But what I want you to think about when you're drawing animals is the legs. That's the most important thing. The posture of the animal. Here you have a coyote walking and it's got its head down. I mean it's pretty level with the back of the animal. And so we want to capture that gesture, that jizz of the animal. But we also want to make sure we understand the proportions of the legs, how tall that animal is, how, how short if it was a squirrel, you know. Um, a deer would be pretty tall. But a coyote is a pretty tall, lanky-looking animal, which is kind of neat. And it's got a long tail. So we're going to keep all of that in mind, and we're going to try to fit that on the page. The first thing to look at is the ground. So we're going to place the ground, and you tell me if this shows up, otherwise I'll use a, a thicker pen. That's great. That looks okay. And then we want to make sure that we're fitting the animal with good space on either side. Okay? And so we have to figure out what the shape of this rectangle is, a box, a frame that's going to fit the entire animal. And drawing lightly, 
I'll draw with a colored pen. So this is a blue pen now, just so that it'll be different from what I end up with. Um, if you're drawing with pencil, you can erase the, these blue lines. Okay, so here's my frame. Uh, that animal has a pretty long rectangle. It's about twice as long as it is wide. So that should fit this thing. Okay, there's my frame. I can fit the whole animal in there. And in that frame, I'm going to then figure out how high is it from the ground, from this lower line, to the belly of the animal, and then to the back of the animal. And so how do you get that proportion? Well, you have to measure by comparing. So I can figure out how many bodies is it below the animal. It's a little more than one body. So it's a little above that middle line that I'm going to have the belly of my coyote. So here's the middle line. I want it a little higher than that. There's the belly of my coyote. Okay. Well, the next important feature is the shoulders and the pelvis. Those are the, those are the key features that we're going to string the legs off of. Okay. And then we're going to figure out how long the tail is going to be. So we want to have a bit of a tail. And if you think about it, from the tip of the nose to the shoulder, from the shoulder to the hips, and from the hips to the tail, you can pretty much divide that coyote into three parts. Tail, body, and head. Okay, head and neck. So I'm going to divide my drawing up into three parts. I'm going to have a shoulder here. I'm going to have my hip here. And so I've got thirds. See that? Okay. I know my head's going to be over here. So I'm going to have my neck over here like this, my head, there's the skull, and then here's the snout of the animal, and the tail is going to come down from the pelvis like that. See that? So now I figure I have my whole coyote sort of sketched out with a pencil. That blue is represented, a, representing a pencil line, okay? So these are just guidelines. These guidelines are vital for getting your proportions correct. We'll build on top of that, make the pencil lines darker after the fact, erase the guidelines you don't want. And then if you're going to ink, you can ink the pencil that you finished with. But you have to do it in stages and approximating all the way along and then adjusting as you go. All right, so the important features of a leg are the shoulder and here you have the, the shoulder, um, so here's the top of the shoulder, the bottom of the shoulder, going off to the elbow. Okay, so you have a bone here, which is the scapula, the shoulder bone. And then you have the upper arm in our physiognomy, physiognomy, which is similar, very similar to other mammals. Okay, and then so from the elbow down to the wrist. And then these are the hand bones, the equivalent of okay the front paw of the animal so here's the back leg you have the pelvis right here on the top of the tail okay going at an angle here so it starts here goes down here and then from the bottom of the pelvis here just at the butt of the animal down to the knee is the thigh okay and then from the knee to the ankle and then these are the foot bones this animal, like most mammals, walks on its toes. The ankle is up in the air. We would walk flat-footed from the ankle all the way to the toes. Very different way of walking. But anyhow, we have our arms up. We need the balance. So wait, I hope that helps you understand. We're going to make some guidelines now based on an understanding of those features comparing people to a dog okay see our heel up in the air the heel okay there's the pelvis there's our pelvis knee knee with the animals the knee is right up near the body okay and that's always the case so this little sort of v shape that's pointing this arrow shape here is a very important shape for artists and then there's another arrow here so you go zigzag, zigzag, and that's a leg. Zigzag, going the opposite way from the shoulder out and then back down to the elbow. That's zigzag. And then 
zigzag out from the wrist to the hand. Okay. When you understand that, you can build your animal. You can build an animal standing, running with both legs, hind and, uh, and forelegs together, or stretched out in a, an extreme posture, running at speed. Here again is the heel of our foot, the heel of a bear, Bears walk very much like us. Hind foot. Here's a dog. There's what we're drawing now today. The, the coyote's heel is way up in the air, and the paw on the toes are down on the ground. Horses have an extremely long hind um, foot, and the ankle is way up high in the air. Okay, so we'll see that difference with deer as well. And of course, they don't have five toes like we do four toes like a dog does with a dew claw up in the air. They have one, deer have two toes walking on the ground, okay? So the hoof of the, the, the horse makes it an ungular grade. So the other ones are digigrades where they have their fingers on the ground and we are plantigrades. Okay, so that's walking. Now let's draw. <laughs> okay, so here's my Here's my guide. That's what we're going to draw. All right. So again, pencils. If you see that, this is reversed from that, but you can see the shoulder again. So we need to have the shoulder back here, starting there, going to just below uh, in front of the neck here like that, and then coming down just below the body like that. That's the first part of the leg. Okay. And then coming down towards the ground, how far down to the ground? So here's the ground. Okay. How far down do we go to get to this point here, which is the next joint? All right. That's the wrist. Well, it's way down there. And so it's almost to the ground, maybe a quarter of the way off the ground. So here's half. Oh, there's a turkey going by. Yeah. <laughs> half and then half again. So right about there. Okay, and where is it relative to the shoulder? It's right below the shoulder, a little bit forward. So we're going to put the foot right there. That's where the, the, the paw is going to be. Okay, coming back up to the wrist here. And there's the wrist. All right, and then all the way back up to the elbow. The elbow is here. And then this goes into the shoulder. Shoulder goes into the neck. And there is where we're going to put the front leg of the animal okay the other front leg is up in the air behind it so we can just sort of rough in where the paw is going to go right behind and above that uh, that wrist and then up in like that coming back up like that and now the hind leg and tail I'm just going to rough in the tail quickly something like that here's the butt of the animal the muscles of the the thigh okay and then the knee is going to be here the back of the pelvis is going to be there that's the the thigh bone the, the heel is back here okay it's quite high and it's underneath the tail almost touching the tail so we're going to bring a line back to the heel there there's my heel and now my foot is off the ground again pretty much a quarter of the way off the ground like that so now I can just drop a line like that and there's my hind paw and now my other paw is going to be somewhere in this area here and of course it doesn't have to be exact we can always adjust adapt the dog changes it's so long as it's not incorrect it'll be fine and then there's the the um, heel of this foot going to be up here and that's about a little less than halfway up so it's pretty high up somewhere about there and that's that bone the heel is going to be there like that and then it's going to go up behind this thigh so that's that's roughly where it's going to go and i'm going to rough in now the the face this head is pointing down a bit 
So I'm going to show you a guideline that's very important here. The head direction, right through the middle of the head, from the back here, underneath the ear, all the way to the, above the mouth and below the nose. Okay, That's going down at a pretty steep angle. I have it going pretty much straight out. So we don't want that. We want that head to come down. The neck comes down a bit. And then the head's going to be here. But it's going to be pointing downwards. So my guideline's going to go like that, pointing down. And then my muzzle, I'm bringing the muzzle down. So there's my muzzle. A line for the top of the nose in front of the mu muzzle like that. That's my guideline for the top of the muzzle, top of the nose. Then my um, forehead of the animal comes back here. A line through vertically through the middle of the skull oval will get, give me where the eye goes and where the air goes. Angling out like this, my air is going to go here. Angling out like this, my eye is going to go here. Okay, it's pretty easy. It's almost out to the top there. Here's the middle. It's halfway out towards the top there. There's the eye. And then going out this way, it would be the air would be, the hole in the air would be there. But you're going to put an, an air, how many airs in the head? Maybe the size of a muzzle. So it goes all the way up here like this. I'm going to put an oval like that for the air, about the size of a muzzle. Okay. Bring that down below that guideline in there like that. And we've got a rough coyote. Now I can switch to using my black pen or you can switch to making darker lines and erase the lines you don't want. And I'm just going to go in there, forehead. The line I want is this line here. That's going to come down behind the head. The eye is going to be a triangular shape, sort of like this. Can you see that all right? Yes. Okay. And the nose is going to be a triangular shape, sort of like this. Is that all right? Mouth is going to come back halfway down the muzzle, above the line there, like that. The jaw, the lower jaw is going to be there. And then the fur is going to go dipping down below. The neck is hanging down a little bit, the fur is. And then we get that, I'm going to bring that leg back a little bit. It just seems, oh, my proportions are a little off here. I'm going to bring that down further. Okay, better there, just below the body. And then we're going to bring the shoulder in like that. So those guidelines are to help. But if I see something that I want to fix, I can fix it right now and then erase. Okay, so now bringing this here. Now that's the pelvis there, it's dropping down towards the butt. Okay, here's the chest. I'm gonna bring that up a bit, that just looks too far down. Okay, and then there is the. I think I have a little bit of a problem now that I've adjusted that. I need to make sure that I don't go too far down there. So I'm going to bring my ground up. And that'll be better proportions, I think, before I finish this leg and make that too long to reach the ground I had before. So I've adjusted the width of the body. I need to adjust the, the distance to the ground. Those are key um, proportional features of the animal. There goes the tail. Off to the heel and then into the oh did I go too far let me get one paw in so I want to adjust this paw I'm going to bring this paw up here now there he is walking there it's it's gonna have his toenails out like that okay and then it's gonna come up to this wrist that's a little too far a little too bent I bring that forward So it's a little long, but you get the drift. You can fix yours with an eraser. I can't do that with my ink. Okay. 
So a lot of drawing is just sort of approximating and fixing, approximating and fixing and, and checking things against each other, checking the shapes, checking the spaces against the shapes. So I would, when I say that, I mean that gap between the ground and the body is a space and we use those to measure as artists. Okay, so then my other leg is going to come forward up, I mean up a little bit there. The ankle then has to go up a bit there, so we're going to bring that in. And that looks okay. And then the paw would be there. Something like that. Okay. And you've got a little bit of a dew claw or a pad underneath the leg there. This other paw is going to be up here somewhere. And then you're going to have two claws, pad, going back to this leg. Something like that. Bring this down. And then we're going to make that foot, that those toes come a little higher than they were before. So there roughly is the shape. I can see that it's a little stubby. And so I would probably have to erase my legs and start over bring my legs up the ground up a tad again just to adjust those proportions so that the animal looks long enough but it's right it's good enough for what I'm doing here just illustrating the technique to you okay so from there then you're looking for adding features once you've got your drawing correct you can then start putting in all your details here goes the air adding the the pupil and starting to add in the fur, okay? So the fur is gonna fall down and back, down and back, back down the body and down with gravity. So it goes back and down, radiating from the face. All the fur is gonna radiate like our hair off to the left and off to the right, up on the top and then falling down the sides. Okay, even on the bear, it would come out this way and they'll go down this way. So the direction of the fur is important to give that idea. And then it's for me, it's just ticking little dashes on there. Some of them are going to be longer where the fur is longer, but dashes are going to give the suggestion of fur. Okay. And on the back here, you can have the, the mantle of the mane of the wolf or coyote in this case. Okay. You can probably talk about the importance of this property for the coyotes um, as a corridor. Yeah, so the really, really cool thing about, I don't know if they can hear me through the mic, but probably, I'll, I'll, I'll actually I think, that, I think it can reach. Um, the really amazing thing about Coyote Valley, and specifically North Coyote Valley, is that it lies in this valley, obviously, between the Santa Cruz Mountains and the Diablo Range. So the Santa Cruz Mountains are on the west, and then the Diablo Range uh, borders the east. And animals, especially mammals like coyotes, bobcats, uh, mountain lions, badgers, they need to be able to cross this valley to pass between the two mountains. Um, a lot of those mammals have large territories and need large territories to be healthy, to make sure their species are biodiver uh, have a lot of biodiversity. And so Coyote Valley is the closest area between those two mountains. It's the closest um, amount of distance between the two ranges and so by protecting the valley we allow animals to cross between the two ranges and and continue having healthy uh, diverse biodiverse populations and the people tracking these yeah so we've partnered with uh, with scientists and and different um, different organizations to study how these animals move so we've done a pretty uh, comprehensive study about specifically about bobcats you can learn more about that on our website and tracked multiple bobcats over months um, to see where they moved and, it, and it, it proved it proved what we all kind of already knew is that they need coyote valley to cross between the two mountains and if there is um, a uh, an obstacle like monterey road is a really big obstacle highway 101 is an obstacle but they can go under that using uh, culverts which are man-made basically tunnels 
Um, and you could track, you could see amazing maps about where all of these bobcats go, and some of them have really huge ranges. Coyotes too, mountain lions too, badgers, the list goes on. Was that that um, video of a badger following a coyote yes. chicken here? Um, it was not in Coyote Valley specifically, but it was, I believe, the Santa Cruz Mountains. Very near. Th- I, I, very, very near the Santa Cruz Mountains. If you guys all saw that, that by a uh, badger coyote friends going under the tunnel together. Um, That was from a study with our friends at Pathways for Wildlife and then post Peninsula Open Space Trust, uh, two really close partners. So that was a really cool video and awesome that it went viral pretty much nationally, if not globally, because it it showed people, yeah, there's animals here using culverts to cross cross, uh, human-made structures like highways. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, so a little, a little, uh, a little environmental lesson in there. There we go. One of that's, the favorites. That's the bobcat. <laughs> that's the bobcat. That's what we're going to draw next. Yeah, and if, if, if anyone is interested on our videos page on Facebook, you can see tons of really cool wildlife videos. A lot of them are bobcats and coyotes right here in this area. Just, you know, playing around like animals do. Running with their kits, uh, looking for food, scratching stuff. I mean, they're they're really really incredible animals out here. So, the bobcat is very similar to the coyote in terms of its guidelines. I'm going to add the spine in there so you can see that the spine goes into the back of the head, and I want you to notice the the, the um, direction of the head and neck. It's not quite as low lying as the coyote was. So we're gonna have that neck going up a little bit above the shoulders. The head is just a little higher than the shoulders in this case. Okay, so a slightly different posture, very bobcat-like. Any questions from anybody? No, I think everyone loved the first lesson. You, oh. got, your, you got a little bit eclipsed by the turkey for a bit. It's still here. As, still it, your sh- as it should be. <laughs> well, when we first got here, there was how many? Three, four? Yeah. And Maybe they were somewhere. displaying right here where we parked our cars, which is very cool. I lost the cap for this. There it is. Okay, hopefully it hasn't dried out. I'll grab another one if it does. Again, the ground. First thing, it's a little dry, but it'll work. Um, And there goes the cap again. Uh, So the ground, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. This is a much longer looking animal. I would say, no, it's similar though. Just a little, I think what it is is that it's walking, the posture. Okay, so we got a really neat stretched out animal because it's walking. I'm gonna make the rectangle just a little bit longer. And the last one was stubby, so maybe that's the right thing to do anyway. So that's about two, just a little more maybe. All right, now the hip. Instead of having a long tail, it's just got a stretched out leg. A third of the way in, third of the way, and ooh, a little short of third of the way. (laughs) Look at that. That's a shorter neck, shorter muzzle too, right? So that's the neat thing about cats. It's got a really squinched in muzzle, like we have a squinched in muzzle. We are a mammal, we have a muzzle, but it's just that our nose is falling down, our face instead of sticking out. <laughs> All right, <laughs> sorry. Half of the page is gonna be body, half of it is space, okay? So half, half. So here we go, that's, that's the height of a cat. And it's a, it's a reasonable length, it's a nice length, but it's, it's not too short, not too long. Well, I like long-legged horses and deer, though. All right, then we have, on the third, we're going to have those two ovals. This one is a a little further forward in the case of this cat. So I'm going to bring it there, put the head up a bit. How big is that head? Well, I can actually measure that circle of the head from the forehead to the back of the head. There's the circle. It's about half of a body. So I just want to make sure that that circle's a little big, a little bigger than I have it maybe. Something like that. Okay, maybe even a tad bigger, but 
not too big something like that and then the muzzle of this animal <laughs> that's the key break up the skull and the muzzle and then figure out the direction of the head and you can actually put a line right down through the middle line right down through the middle the eye is going to go right there oh, right on that line there like that that's going to be the cat eye then up here is going to be the hole in the air and the air is going to be sticking up like that okay so tail very short not much of a tail I'm gonna make this a bigger oval for the thigh knee is going to be here pelvis here like that tail sticking off below the, the top of the rump and then just falling down the back here like this there's the tail that head looks a little small to me I might make that bigger when I do the black line but the hind leg goes all the way out to here and so the ankle is up in the air somewhere here like that the paw is down on the ground and then you want to have the leg coming back the thigh coming back like that to the ankle then down to the ground where the paw comes forward so that's the hind leg and then we can always adjust if it doesn't look right we're drawing lightly so just use your pencil very lightly so you can erase without having problems and then the top of the uh, pelvis right there at the highest point of the animal this comes down towards the shoulder and then out and then up towards the head like that this is going to be the knee sort of halfway almost almost halfway way out here somewhere okay it's really sort of reaching forward and this is coming down and then this leg is going to be over here this foot is going to be in the middle of the body here somewhere like that coming back now I want you to notice the um, the length of that ankle it's pretty long and the length of the wrist the hand bones are very short so that's important when you're doing deer it's going to be different and hopefully we'll have time we'll do a deer okay and um, they have a longer hand bone it's as long as their forearm this one is about half of a forearm okay so here's my elbow here is the front of the shoulder the lower part of the shoulder and here's the upper part of the shoulder so they're there and then down back down and back so not vertical but a little bit back and to the wrist and the wrist is going to be here the hand the toes the f fingers <laughs> whatever you call them <laughs> there so there's this pause going to be there that's the forearm it gets wider at the top narrower at the wrist okay and then a nice curve up towards the neck like this then the neck to the head you see my head is way too small Neck's going to be there and I'm going to bring my head forward a bit so there and then I bring my muzzle forward a bit so that's my cat better <laughs> all right now foreleg is underneath the jaw of the animal it comes all the way forward like that so we'll put that first figure out where the elbow is going to be somewhere up here near the body off the ground and then your wrist is going to be back here so bam bam join the dots bam bam and that's the trick join the dots it helps a lot okay so there's my shoulders pretty high let's put in the black lines now figure out where everything goes we're going to try to make it look more like a cat all right so my I, my head is going to be up at the top here down to the shoulder like that the highest part of the animal is the back hip there there we go and then there's the back of the air front of the air the little peak of fur on the top of the air there like that so there's one air next to it is another air like that forehead coming down dropping down a bit there and we're going to adjust the eye the eye is going to be just about 
here and now the nose coming is going to be a little triangle somewhere like this and then the mouth is going to be below the midline somewhere like this a nice jutting chin that's a cat chin <laughs> and a mane all cats should have a mane like a lynx and a bobcat how's that <laughs> that's a catty cat all right we need another clip with this breeze is blowing okay now here it comes the neck very short neck fur is going back and down like this here's going to be where the the chest is so right here is, is the chest and in front of the chest a bit is the muscles of the forearm the foreleg of this leg behind and then there's the the elbow coming down to the wrist the wrist comes down to the paw and then there's the paw claws are withdrawn Ta -da. <laughs> it's starting to come together all that fussing I did with the guidelines is going to go away when I erase it all right <laughs> all right so now I want to make sure that this elbow is behind my shoulder so it's a little bit too straight down right now I'm going to bring that elbow back a tad like that That's an Oriole calling. I'm sorry, we're getting distracted. <laughs> There's an Oriole right above us it's right there. It's not a turkey, it's an Oriole. He's bright orange and black and white. Okay, here we go. Yeah, well, you're with bird watchers here. We, d we drop everything <laughs> when a bird comes by. Okay. See that? Looking okay? Now I can see some problems here. My spacing here is not the same, but it works, so it's okay. I'm not gonna fuss too much. But I could then erase and adjust if I didn't like it. But that leg is in, in a much more dramatic posture than mine. Mine is more boring. Mine's more like sauntering. And that one's really clocking. He's going somewhere, okay? And so here's the paw. And then it comes back, something like that okay now the hind leg he's coming forward the body is going to have more of an angle like that give it a little more of a narrow um, belly and a bigger chest okay and now we have the fur from the rump and here we have the ankle coming back towards the foot a nice hefty thigh quite strong legs and, and you can see the angle where the, the hind legs are longer than the forelegs so they obviously use it for power running for chasing prey like turkeys and here we go this is coming down and then a larger paw than I have I think something like that okay now again this is going to stretch back muscles ankle there we go and the last of the hind leg that's dropping down to the toes here toes on the ground okay and they have their toenails their, their, their claws withdrawn when they're walking so you don't see it in their prints when you see animal prints and here's the tail and it's got a nice little flick at the end there coming out of the rump like that and that's a cat. Yeah, you can start fussing with this now. Once you've got it and you're happy with it, you can start adding stripes. Making it more Egyptian. <laughs> and Anyhow, the fun, the fun stuff, <laughs> the fun stuff starts, okay? And if you look at that animal, it really has a lot of um, 
speckling over the body so you can then once you've got the the, the body mapped out start to add the the pattern of spots to it and Teresa was wondering can the public draw at the park or is it still closed uh, right now the North Coyote Valley Conservation is not yet open to the public oh no, go ahead, keep going. But it will be um, uh, soon, one day, and we would really encourage everyone to get involved with the visioning process. Um, so please go to our website and you can sign up for emails. If you just go to um, openspaceauthority.org, it should be on the homepage. Um, and you can sign up to get emails about the process of, of opening this beautiful, beautiful area up to the public. that's all and Tanya also hi Tanya so Tanya Diamond commented wow with a little kitty face Tanya is actually from Pathways for Wildlife so thanks for joining us Tanya <laughs> thanks for everything you do for wildlife thank you Tanya <laughs> and, and team and team great work I enjoy the, the um, maps oh yeah well so if we have time, we could do that. Beautiful. I love their markings. Or that. That's what Tanya's working on saving. But I think what we're going to do is another ungulate. We're going to, well, an ungulate. <laughs> we haven't done any ungulates yet. We're going to do a deer. So what I want you to notice is on the cat from the wrist going down to the, the, the paw you have a very short um, bone, hand bone. This is the wrist and then the bones that we're looking at are fused inside here. These bones that we have in the metal carpels, the carpels or whatever they're called, uh, join together here and to create this bone. Look at this from the wrist down to the hoof. It's a really quite extended on these ungulates, horses and deer. Okay, so it's a different leg structure to a degree, of course not very different, but I have this um, image from Charles Knight's book where he has these skeletons inside of a skin and the skin, everything is sort of dark, so there's no detail. But it shows you the spine going up the back again. And why I keep talking about the spine is that uh, when people draw animals, they draw it as if the neck is coming up to the bottom of the head, it's going into the bottom of the head. But really what's happening, even though it's, it's, it is coming up to the bottom of the head to a degree, it's the back of the head. And that's so that the spine can go in at the back. You need to have the ability to, to have that sense of the neck going into the back of the skull okay so it's important to have the neck towards the back always angling in towards the skull skull is always a little forward okay and that's what that's about again the drop from the rump long strong hind legs for running quickly and then these are much longer forelegs and what they have that's special that gives them the extra speed is fewer less friction on the ground fewer toes contacting the ground, just pretty much two of them creating uh, the deer hoof, okay? So which should we draw, this one or this one? Ooh, I like the photo. I like, it's a I nice. like the photo too. It's gonna be a little tougher for me because I don't have my guides, but let's do the photo. My printer stopped working, so I wasn't able to print out my guides for this thing. So we don't have guidelines for the artist. I will make do. A ground line. What's the frame? 
It's not long like the cat. The neck is not stretched out like the coyote. The neck is almost vertical. It's a little forward, of course, from the shoulders and quite vertical. And that's a very typical posture for an animal that's being hunted all the time. They need to be able to look around easily and see above tall things. Uh, so they want a, you want a, a box that's high, so we want a ground that's low. Okay, and this is much more boxy. It's much more of a square. So we're gonna make a square. And because I wanna make it as big as possible, I'm gonna bring my ground down. Uh, so that's gonna be where my deer is gonna go. I'm gonna make that deer as big as I can. Otherwise the details will be too difficult for me to draw with a big fat pen. Okay, now, where in that box is, is the animal? The middle of the animal is in the middle of the drawing. And so then how many of these um, body widths are gonna fit in there? One, two, three, maybe. So we're gonna divide that up into thirds. I need guidelines. I always need my guidelines. So that's not quite right. There we go. My body's in here, but it's a little narrow on the thirds. So I'm gonna use that line there for my body shape, okay? I want to do the same thing with the front here. So where is the hip? No tail on this one, so the hip is way back here. Okay, the shoulder is right in the middle. So the shoulder is going to be here or here. The rump is going to be near the far right edge. And the head's going to be up here. But I need to have both antlers and neck. So half of this is going to be head and neck and then half of it's going to be antlers okay so i'm just trying to fit everything so i'm going to bring the head somewhere right here in the middle of this third and then that oval is going to be how big one neck half a body less than half a body so my oval is going to be here and about this big and that looks deerish dare i say it okay and so we want to have coming off of that the muzzle and the muzzle is going to be pretty small and forward of that is a gap there with a the cat the two the muzzle and the skull overlapped half half that mu that muzzle was halfway in and halfway out okay this is more deer like you have the nose here then you have the bridge of the uh, going up like that and then you're going to have this dog like deer like you got more of a muzzle okay and then that joins into the bottom a big strong jaw okay now that's going to come down to the shoulder from the back of the skull the neck's coming out and down and into the shoulder like that okay so there's the deer there's the shoulder and there's the rump like that okay and then you're gonna have the tail under here so i'm sort of figuring it out it's fitting i think so far the eye is going to go here like this the air is going to go here the whole of the air is going to be way out the air actually juts out the back here and sticks out like that okay now this is going to be the shoulder and you can actually see right there the lower part of the the shoulder bone like that okay so the shoulder um, scapula is going to be in there like that okay and then attached to it wow coming right to here <laughs> that is the upper arm the elbow is way up in the body right there just below the body right there so the elbow is going to be somewhere there like that that's the joint that i'm seeing there it's kind of odd very short very muscular um, upper arm dropping down towards the ground uh, probably going down almost halfway about halfway so from here to about here and then you're going to have the foreleg and that's the, the direction back to the wrist okay so wait a second now, elbow wrist wrist going back to the um, hoof back there somewhere so just roughing it in, we'll fix it. We're gonna do the back legs now. It looks a little stubby to me, but we'll see how to fix it shortly by checking it against things. So we're gonna make that chest a little thick. The belly is gonna be like this. 
and then the thighs are coming forward like that the knee is right under the body there like that right underneath that halfway down is the ankle off the ground and then underneath this towards the front shoulder is where you have the hind hoof hitting the ground so way back way forward way up forward so we now need to make sure that that's forward enough okay there's a really interesting shape here that's going to help me find where i've gone wrong so what i see is that my neck's going to be too short my shoulder's too far forward i want to pull that shoulder back a little bit here maybe bring that leg back a little here maybe and that way when i bring this leg down put that hoof back in it's matching this better ma matching that shape better here too that's coming more vertically down like that okay so i'm checking the shapes that's going to help me get everything right in the end now that's not going to look quite so awkward when i put the hoof down here and join it in okay so that looks like those two interactions this leg coming backwards from here dropping out so you have your knee here join the dots there's where you have your heel and that's coming down to your wrist so that comes from the tail down out back a little bit and then down this is this hoof is off is a little higher this hoof is a little higher than that hoof there so it's more about the height of this so I have it a little too low but it looks better where I have it right now so I'm just gonna leave it okay so there's the hoof off the ground so I'm roughing it in it's very heavy sorry about the heavy lines the chest coming forward like that from the leg and then the neck is coming out of the chest the elbow of the leg that's on the far side of the body is in front of and below the air in front of the chest and below the air so it's all it's right, right over here somewhere way way forward I need that space between this leg and this leg needs a gap that's this gap here elbow wow how do I do that that looks odd the neck isn't thick enough maybe or the head isn't forward enough maybe oh we've got some hawks yeah. blackbirds chasing a hawk away from their nests red-winged blackbirds are nesting right here in the cattails in front of us and the red-tailed hawk came too close bird brick yeah we needed it <laughs> it was getting boring <laughs> all right so here we go I'm gonna drop this this foot it's right underneath the the, the um, mouth of the animal I shouldn't have put that triangular nose on there there do not have that triangular nose they have more of a slit right there like that and then a lip sticking out a little bit but anyway this um, foot goes here this hoof like that then you have the hand bones there coming up to about here like that so something like this yeah. the other air I think my head's a little small or something it really is hard when you're sitting so close to something that's a little too far forward bring that back okay and then the antlers are going to go all the way to top of the page bad move on my part i should have made more room for the antlers but nothing i can do about it it's going to fit but not well so i don't have good space i have bad space so there's an antler there's an antler and then one over here going up above the eye like that and one forward over the nose like that and then they come down in front of that air something like that I think I need more shoulder 
just looks a little wimpy. And then bring that up a little higher. All right, so let's draw it in black. Not my best drawing. See if I can find a brush pen. All right. Forehead down to the nose, lip. Almost a bit of a smile on that guy. Lower jaw, nice hefty jaw, and a large eye. The ear. Falling back. Antlers. Oops. Mine was too wide. Antlers. So get good reference. You know, I'm not going to be able to give you a great drawing today, but it's okay. The more drawing you do, the better. So make mistakes and don't be afraid to. Art isn't easy. It takes work. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this is my favorite part. I, I'm sure others do when the black comes the in. The magic. Like it all comes together. <laughs> you made all your mistakes in pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Therese wants to know how long you've been drawing. You want to know how old I am? <laughs> I've probably been drawing for 40, 45 years or something. <laughs> Since I was in school, supposed to be doing my history lessons. <laughs> And the tail falls back underneath the rump here. It's kind of neat the way they... It's a black-tailed deer. Our local deer is called the Colombian um, black-tailed mule. It's a mule deer. So they have very large ears like a mule. It's kind of neat. Colombian black-tailed deer. It's a subspecies of the um, black-tailed mule deer of the West. Something like that. I think I can add some bulk to this leg. And then this one needs to thin down a bit. It's a bit too thick. But there I can adjust and adjust and adjust and adapt. Just keep perfecting it, fixing it. And then there's a little bit of a, um, you wouldn't call it a claw on thing, but a, a doohickey sticking down be above the hoof. There's the hoof at the end. It's a little black triangle. Okay. And then here you have that little hind third toe, I think. Kind of like a dew claw on a cat. And then the hoof again. But this is two triangles this time. Okay. So you have one in the front. Yeah, like that. One behind it. Okay, that's a deer. Now we have the shoulder, a turkey vulture, and a red tail. Mm. I was thinking of doing this lesson indoors, but I'm glad we came out. We're, we're alone, there's nobody else around us. So there's no risk to anybody else of us being here, and we're all very close. This is San Jose. I mean, the city is just over the hill right here. So very close to home. I think the animals are a little more comfortable. They're coming out, maybe uh, more than if there were more people out here. Yes, and they adapt to your presence as long as you're not threatening. And so here again, that little extra third toe there, and then the hoof, 
and then finishes like that. Eh? Beautiful. That's Rough. <laughs> Magic. It's not quite right. It's too too close to the top. It has mistakes. Start over. You know. Second one's going to be better. All right. So how much time do we have? I think we're right about at the hour. Okay. Thank you. Thank everyone. you. This is awesome. <laughs> And please, if you uh, do today, send us your drawings, and we'd love to see them. <clears throat> thank you very much. So, I just want to say thank you again to everyone for coming in and, and watching and tuning in today. Thank you for Edward for coming back once again, showing us how to do some naturalist art. Uh, and it was just really cool being out here today because, let's see, we saw turkey vultures, we saw turkeys, red-tailed hawk, orioles... I saw a bunch of ladybugs when we first came in. Uh, there were deer and, and a wild pig up uh, on the hills. And it just is such a good example of how rich this area is and how cool it is that we protected it. And that's thanks to you too, thanks to the public support we get and, and, um, and just the appreciation for the nature that we have so close to San Jose uh, and just within the Santa Clara Valley, it's really amazing. Very fitting too, it's Earth Week. I don't know if anyone knew, but tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. Uh, today is John Muir's birthday, so it all, it all fits together. Just a really um, special week for appreciating nature, even if that's nature close to home. I said it at the beginning, but I'll say it again. Hang out in your backyard, go for a 20 minute walk in your neighborhood. Um, if you don't have a yard, go to a local neighborhood park uh, and stay safe, maintain that social distancing, but take an hour today to just appreciate nature. Um, and we're going to keep doing these virtual events. I have said it before. I'll say it again. As long as you're tuning in, we'll, we'll keep having them. And uh, we have a lot more planned for you. But just for today, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, stay connected with nature. So thanks for joining us.